Can we talk about the pronouns? Because I know you don't say them. And this has been an ongoing debate. Matt Walsh doesn't believe in saying them. You know, I don't think Ben Shapiro, my pal over Daily Wire, says them. I've, I've been saying them. I've been saying them. And I've run into a brick wall when I've gotten to Dylan Mulvaney because I see that Dylan Mulvaney is a faker. <laughs> Just like as clear as the day is long. Dylan Mulvaney wants to be famous. Dylan Mulvaney's out there just completely patronizing us, bastardizing us. And I refuse, I, I don't believe Dylan Mulvaney uh, has any sort of disorder. I believe D Dylan wants to be a star. So I've run into it now. Why do you not say the pronouns that they choose? So, okay. So the pronouns are like a gateway drug, if you like, to accepting this ideology. So you've got, um, there's a really good essay called Pronouns Are a Hypnol. And what it talks about um, is the fact that once you say she, it's really difficult to police our boundaries successfully. So if I'm out to dinner uh, and there's somebody at the table and, and it's she all night, it's very difficult to say she can't use the women's toilets. She can't run in the girls' uh, athletics. She can't swim uh, in the girls' swim team. And so I just think we it's not a courtesy. Uh, it's, it's damaging for women. Every time we allow these men to creep into our language, uh, we erode a little bit of our own boundaries. And so I just absolutely refuse to do it. I don't care how much effort. I don't care whether they've had surgery. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, there is no man on this planet that deserves uh, the pronoun she, her. Mm -hmm. So what do you tell your kids? Because now they're asked on, in various forums. What, what are your pronouns? Um, my children really have avoided it. I've sort of told them it's not their hell to die on and it's social suicide. So if they're really asked directly, uh, they can say it. But, uh, you know, I, I've been doing this a long time. So my children were primed before this uh, ideology infested schools. So um, they haven't yet been asked their pronouns. But... You know, it's, you can say your own pronouns if you like. I just think you can say, look, that's not an ideology I go along with. Uh, that's what my kids not, say. I, I've told my yeah. kids, because we're in a, you know, woke hell in the Northeast uh, United States. I've told my kids, you can just simply respond. Um, I don't feel comfortable talking in those terms. Yeah. And uh, look, I think you can try and avoid those conversations completely as a teenager. Um, but I said to my children, you don't have to lie. So if somebody says, do you think that person is a woman? You don't have to say uh, yes. Uh, but you could you could say, I don't think it's appropriate to talk about it. I think it causes too much division. There's many ways to avoid the conversation. But look, I, I just think with the pronouns, it's almost okay what you want to do personally. But if you're advocating for others, if you have a platform to speak, um, such as in the in the media, and you're a, an incredibly strong and successful woman like you, then I think it would be great if um, if you held the the line because so many women look up to you. That um, I think I would really love to see you you hold that line quite tight. Mm. I've really been wrestling with it lately. I, I know I'll have a lot of my viewers and audience say use the right pronoun, meaning the biological pronoun. Uh, and I just never wanted to be disrespectful, but it's gone beyond a matter of compassion or respect at this point. You know, as I said yeah. at the top of the show, it's there, we're playing for much higher stakes now. Womanhood itself is under threat. Our spaces, our wellness, our safety, you know, from prisons to locker rooms and so on. We had a debate on the mm -hmm. show recently when it hit the news that somebody had gone into a YMCA. A 17-year-old girl took to the microphones out at the San Diego YMCA is saying, I saw a man, a naked man, in the locker room, and I don't think I should be subjected to that, nor should my six-year-old sister. Then the person came out, who was a, the man, who was a trans person, and this, this guy was saying, I had the surgery, and there's no way she saw a penis. Now, we don't know whether that's true or not, but what if, what if the person did have a surgery? What if it's a biological man who had the surgery, now looks like they have female anatomy? Should that person be allowed to use the female locker room? No, because it goes back again to fetish. And so there will be some men that actually do have their genitals um, inverted and removed. 
uh, and they will still do it for a fetish. And look, it's not for women to make men feel more comfortable about themselves. It's uh, women's spaces are for women to feel comfortable about ourselves and to feel that we have safety and dignity and privacy. So I just think under no circumstances uh, should women be expected to move over because every time we do, every time we include men in our space, we exclude so many women who then won't be able to go to that space. There are more victims of sexual assault, more female victims of sexual assault in the United States of America than there are men pretending to be women. How do you know if it's the fetish thing or if it's actual gender dysphoria, which a very, very small percentage of the population does suffer from? Well, I think the point is that you don't know. I mean, I would say it's at least 90% of men who claim to be women uh, do it for a sexual fetish. But I could be completely wrong. It could be 50-50. It doesn't actually matter because I still don't want them in our spaces. Um, you know, my husband's a really nice man, a really, really lovely man, and I don't want him in female spaces either. <laughs> and he doesn't want to go in them. You know, decent men don't want to make women and girls feel uncomfortable by using our space. There is not a man, I would, I, I say that there are not men um, who don't have predatory tendencies who want to enter into female spaces knowing it would make some of those women in that space uncomfortable. So I just, you know, it doesn't really matter what their motivation is. They just have to stay out. Yeah. I, I, I knew somebody whose spouse said that uh, they wanted to start dressing as a woman during sex. And the, the person thought, well, you know, I guess if this gets him off, what, who does it harm? Well, that person's now a full-blown transsexual, like had the surgery, the yes. whole bit. But it, it began, as you are saying, he got off on putting on women's clothing and that's what turned him on. So, I mean, it is very problematic to allow these people into the very spots where we change our clothes. We take our pants down to use the toilet. We send our little girls. I, we, we're being asked to pretend it's not part of the dynamic. Yeah. I mean, many of the, the, the uh, spokespeople in the United States, you've got a man called Alok who says that uh, little girls, five-year-old girls, little girls are kinky. Um, you know, a lot of these men talk about rape fantasies, how the ultimate in being a woman is is to be submissive and be raped. Uh, th these are these are a lot of men that are now seen by the Biden administration, for example, as people that should be spokeswomen. Uh, it's it's ludicrous. It's like it's it's a little bit like the Catholic Church of old, um, and I don't want to cast any aspersions uh, amongst Catholics because I have very many good friends, and I know the majority of Catholics are really decent human beings. But there were some men that used the advantage of unfettered access to people, to women and children, um, just by putting this robe on. I don't see transgenderism as any different. Uh, once you say you're part of the LGBTQ+, plus, uh, community, which let's face it might be that you once fancied a man in a dress and you're a man yourself. Um, you don't even have to do anything to be queer. You could just say you're queer. Uh, once you do that, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Nobody's going to ask you any questions whatsoever uh, about your motivations, your motives, um, and whether you're fit to be wherever you want to be. Look, you did the tough thing during COVID. You paid your people and pulled your business through the pandemic. And now, doing the tough thing could qualify you for up to $26,000 per employee at covidtaxrelief.org. Government funds are available right now to reward companies with two or more employees who stayed open during COVID. This is not a loan, and you don't have to pay it back. The program's complicated, but no one knows more about it than the CPAs and tax experts at covidtaxrelief.org. You pay nothing up front. They do all the work and share a percentage of the cash they get you. Businesses of all types, including nonprofits and churches, can qualify, including those who took PPP loans, even if you had increases in sales. You did the tough thing for your employees during COVID. Let covidtaxrelief.org help get you up to $26,000 per employee. Go to covidtaxrelief.org, covidtaxrelief.org, covidtaxrelief.org. Org. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.